call this meeting of the Sullivan County Delegation to order. And uh, first, I would like to let, uh, ask Representative Rawls to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you, Representative. <coughs> now, uh, we will go around again with introductions, uh, and I will first of all turn it over to uh, Representative Sullivan, please. Uh, Ryan Sullivan, uh, currently Sullivan by District 1, of course. Um, of course, Springfield, Springfield, Brent. Linda Tanner of Sullivan County. Now I, I represent Plainfield, Cornish, Brent, and Lloyd, and Newport, Son of East, Springfield, and Unity. Thank you. Uh, Representative <coughs> Sue Gottling, I represent Sullivan District 2, Son of East, and Creighton. Representative Judy Aaron, I represent I represent Sullivan County District Seven. That's Aqua, Goshen, Langdon, Lemster, and Washington. Representative Skip Rollins, District Six, Newport Unity. Representative Stephen Smith, Sullivan Eleven, Aqua, Charlestown, Goshen, Langdon, Lemster, and Washington. Representative Terry Spilsbury, District Eight, Charlestown. Representative Walt Stapleton, District uh, Sullivan County, District 5, Claremont Ward 3. Yeah, Representative John Callum, representing Sullivan 6, Unity, and Newport. Representative Lee Oxenham, representing Plainfield, Corners, Springfield, and Grimm. Representative Gary Merchant, representing District 4 in Sullivan County, which is Ward 2 in Claremont, New Hampshire. Representative Andrew O'Hearn, Sullivan 3, Ward 1. And again, I'm John Cloutier. I have the honor of being the chair of the Sullivan County delegation this term, and currently I represent Sullivan County District 10, which comprises the entire city of Claremont. Thank you, everybody, for the. And I will now turn it over to the com um, the count or the commissioners if they want to enter. Commissioner, I guess uh, Nelson, maybe you want you and Commissioner Osgood want to. Enter. And the rest of the county staff. Um, ben Nelson, uh, County Commissioner. Joel Osgood, County Commissioner. Derek Rowan, County Manager. Mary Burke, Director of Facilities. Okay, I think that's it for tonight. Okay, good. Sharon very good. Thank you very much for introducing yourselves, everybody. Sharon Callum is manning the board back at headquarters. And okay, yeah, we don't want to forget Sharon Callum. Thank you very much for that reminder, Commissioner. <laughs> Okay, let's uh, moving on to item number two, review and approve June 28, 2022, fiscal year 2023 convention meeting minutes. Uh, I don't know if everybody has had a chance to review the minutes that you should have received in the uh, via email, and I think I know some of the you, uh, some of you have asked for corrections, and I assume those corrections have been made. So if everything's in order, I will now entertain a motion to accept the minutes of the June 28, 2022 delegation meeting. Motion, motion to accept. Motion by, to accept by Representative Merchant. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Representative Gottlieb. Are we ready for the vote? Any questions or comments? Voice vote okay? Yes. Okay. All those in favor of accepting the June 28, 2022 uh, Sullivan County delegation Budget convention meeting minutes signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. The minutes are approved. Next item. This is an item that was tabled at the last delegation meeting of June 28th. The authorized acceptance and expenditure of unanticipated funds. Uh, and we had a motion and there was, we tabled it. So if we're going to discuss this, I will need have to and I will need a motion to remove this item from the table, please. Motion to remove it. Okay, motion by Representative Merchant to remove this item. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Representative Spillsbury. Okay. Uh, I don't know, Representative Merchant, do you want to lead off? I uh, mean Yes, thank you. Mr. Okay, Chair. oh you're oh, welcome. Hold on, I think a vote could bring it up. Oh I'm call. sorry. And it has to be a roll call, please, because you need two thirds. What's that? Okay. A uh, two-thirds. Okay. I thank you very much, Representative Hearn, for that reminder. And this needs to be a roll call. 
All right, okay, so we're going to need a roll call to take this item off the table that needs a two-thirds. We're all here, so I believe that takes nine votes. <coughs> okay, so we're all, we all ready. Uh, majority? Okay. majority, okay, I stand correct. The deputy speaker is here, so. Uh, he speaks. It's good. good thing uh, I've got the deputy speaker here. Okay, are we ready for the vote? Okay, pl clerk will please call the roll. Representative Aaron. Yes. Representative Callum. Yes. Representative Gottling. Yes. Representative Merchant. Yes. Clerk says yes. Representative Oxingham. Yes. Representative Rollins. No. Representative Smith. Yes. Representative Spillsbury. Yes. Representative Stapleton. Yes. Representative Tanner. Yes. Vice Chair. Yes. The Chair. Yes. Okay, and the motion uh, is carried by a 12 to 1 roll call vote. Okay, so I don't know who wants that, Representative Merchant or? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Oh, you're welcome. Um, I went back and listened to the uh -huh. discussion we had, which was very vibrant and informative. And we had discussions and a motion to divide the question, which I believe was tied. And I would like to come back with a subsequent resolution, a subsequent amendment, if you will. Um, for the delegation to consider. So, but may you pass this out? Right, okay, you're going to pass it out now. Thank you. Okay. Oh, sure. Can we have an amendment? So, okay, you, we remove something. I assume any item that we remove from the table, as I understand it, can is sub, open to amendment if the majority. Approval. Right. I, I believe that's, that's correct. Understanding, but I'll defer, defer to the deputy chair, the deputy speaker. Sorry, didn't mean to promote you, President Smith. I do not recall if there was a pending motion. So the motion of divide failed. Aye. That's failed. Yeah. But prior to that, there was a motion for an amendment. I don't remember what happened with that. Yeah, it had something out of it. Thank you. I think it was, I think it was only the table. Okay, let's look through just to be sure we've got our parliamentary procedure. The motion to divide carried. It was part B. Yeah. That tied. Thank you. Okay. Part A passed, part B tied. I stand for it. So in saying that, what it went back to do was to revisit the resolution the intent of the resolution is not at all to bind the commission. That is not the intent at all. We all have agreed over many meetings that the number one priority of this delegation, I repeat, the number one priority of this delegation has been to fund the nursing home project. We want to take care of the seniors. That was the number one priority. We have gone to the federal delegation seeking funds. We've gone to the state seeking funds. Based upon that being our priority, we stated it federally, we have stated it statewide. What this amendment simply does is take those monies and those funds that we all agreed that should be earmarked and allocated to nursing project to support the project, to support our seniors be sure that they have a place to go. That's all this does. It just codifies into a resolution everything we agreed to. So in saying that, what it simply states is that ARPA money, or money which can come through the state, through the coronavirus state and local fiscal relief funds, which is what the state receives, that they are received directly or indirectly, that we are putting our stamp of approval saying to all of us, we firmly believe in what we said. We want to support this project. We want our seniors to have a place to go. That's all we're saying. Nothing short of that. So I will make a motion on the floor 
to approve the amendment if I can have a second, but we have a discussion on it based upon that. Second. Second. Okay. okay, who made the, now you made the motion, make Representative, the motion and, and Representative Gottlieb made the second, I, or Representative? No, 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 I have a question. Question, okay, yeah. go ahead, please, yeah. Representative Aaron. Question of Representative Merchant. So my question is, how is this different um, from the original motion that is uh, the, the motion that we always approve uh, after our budget sessions and with your motion what is it that you're tr what problem is it that you're trying to solve well the problem I'm trying to solve representative Aaron thank you for the question by the way is that last year and I'll read the minutes discussion representative merchant after this motion includes or excludes the upper money coming into this year or the 4.1 million next year County Commissioner Ferland confirmed that they received these funds, but spending them requires a supplemental appropriation. He confirmed the first half of the upper funds arrived, and the second half is yet to arrive. He also noted that the upper money is not a grant, and therefore the motion that relates to grants. Subsequent to that, I learned, and we all did, that it was determined that upper funds were in fact grants and therefore exempt from this resolution. And I want to be clear that we, as a delegation, are going to stand behind what we said and put that money towards the nursing home and not have someone misinterpret it. I think our seniors deserve that, don't you? With all due respect. Okay. Okay. Yes, go ahead, please. May I? Yeah. With all due respect, Representative Merchant. I believe any of the ARPA funds, any other unanticipated funds that come to the Sullivan County uh, Board of Commissioners, um, any other monies, whether it be grants that they apply for, the ARPA funds that they have, um, any other monies that come to them. I believe that they, these, the three men that are serving as our county commissioners um, are men of integrity, uh, are elected officials who are beholden to their constituents and the taxpayers in this county. And I believe that they will do the best to their ability to spend whatever funds come to this county in the most judicious way possible. I don't believe that uh, it is our uh, our place to tell them what to spend, when to spend it, and how to spend it. I don't agree with micromanaging the county commissioner's job. In all due respect, Ms. President Barron, yeah. this does not tie the hands on anything else that comes into the county. If they want to go out and get grants beyond this, they're totally exempt from it. All we're talking about is the ARPA money and the state funds that are coming in to support the project and the federally delegated monies that we went to in the earmark with the Senator Shaheen. That's all that's doing. Okay. Uh, yes, Sir Representative uh, Sullivan, followed by Representative Aaron, please. <clears throat> uh, just a question. I, I Maybe I've seen this term before but have forgotten. The Corona State and Local Fiscal Relief Funds. Can you, can somebody tell me what that is? Yes, if I may. Mr. Okay, go on. Um, that is a subset of the ARPA funds, and I again I wanted to be sure that when the resolution was written, that we don't have a misinterpretation of the terminology. Would that be the Gopher funds? Yes. Thank you. Okay, uh, Representative Aaron, please. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. So I believe that the original motion that we had before us, uh, the motion to authorize acceptance and expenditure of unanticipated funds, is sufficient in this case. And I don't believe that we need to uh, make any other kinds of resolutions or amendments to that uh, original motion. Because I believe that the people who are serving this, this county are doing the best by the taxpayers. And, um, I think anyone who would support this resolution, it's a slap in the face to our commissioners. And 
I, I will not be supporting it. Okay. Thank you, Representative Aaron. Representative Spillsbury, please. Support the resolution and uh, as, as amended. To me, this is completely non controversial. I think it's extremely unfortunate that it's being characterized as a test of our view of the Commission's integrity. Um, personally, speaking only for myself, it's not. And I think it's a, a, a rhetorical misfortune that it's been characterized that way. Here's what is going on. The statutes, our RSAs, place the authority to deal with these funds in the hands of the delegation. That's the law. The statute allows us to delegate those to the commissioners. And it's become, I gather, a long-standing tradition to do that by the underlying resolution that we're proposing to amend. OK. So in our judgment, it has become comfortable and familiar to delegate. And I remain comfortable with that notion. So the resolution should go forward. But the amendment simply takes off that uh, delegation list three specific grants that are all intended for the nursing home. It's the seven million remaining uncommitted from the two years of ARPA grants. The funds that Gopher is uh, assigning uh, for the project, and the two million that uh, Senator Shaheen has uh, has had earmarked. So, if we're all in agreement, then why don't we just all nod yes? Those are going to the nursing home, and nobody's integrity is challenged. Thank you, Representative Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I've served on this delegation for 12 years through various representatives and commissioners and controlled by both parties. And this has never been necessary before. Nobody's given me a compelling reason why it's necessary now. We have a commitment from the commissioners who have stated publicly that they understand we want this money used for the nursing home. They are responsible to their constituents and have agreed. And their constituents, they have districts, but they got to run countywide. Two of them up for re-election now. Having said that, I have known Commissioner Nelson for, I think, 14 years, Commissioner Osgood as well, George Hebert a number of years. When they give their word, I believe them. We're supposed to work together, not use enforcement tactics to make them do what they already agreed to do. I worry about the future of how we're going to work in county government if all of a sudden we have to, you know, use legal technicalities or enforcement measures to gain cooperation. It's better when Commissioner Hebert, the chair, said, we hear you and that's what we're going to do. And if anything else comes up, we're going to talk to you. That's good enough for me. I don't need this. We've never needed it before. Nobody's given me a compelling reason today, and I will not support it. Thank you, Representative. Uh, anybody else? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, I'm sorry. Yes, Representative Rollins, yes, please. I disagree with Representative Aaron, Representative Smith has said most of what I want. And I see, to me, I see this as an overreach. We have an agreement with the commissioners that they are bound to this and that they will support this. I don't see the need for it. As the other two representatives have said, I think this is going to divide the commissioners from the delegation. And I think it's going to make for extremely bad feelings. And I just, I just don't see the purpose of why we have to do this, why we can't trust our commissioners. This will set a very bad precedent down the road. This will set a precedent for future legislations or delegation meetings in, in, in this county. And it could, get, it could get very out of control. I think everyone should be allowed to do their job. The commissioners should do their job. We should trust them. I believe that as a delegation, we should trust them, and I believe that we should do our job. So I see no purpose in this amendment whatsoever, other than to divide the two, the two um, political divisions, commissioners and delegation. I wish, I wish this uh, 
would never, and I will not support it. I will Thank not support it. Rollins. Other, okay, Rep. Sam Callum, please. So as maybe the only representative here who also in the past has uh, served as a county commissioner, um, I feel that this is unnecessary and I will not vote for it. Okay, thank you, Representative Kelly. Further questions? Yes, Representative Stapleton, please. The last sentence of the resolution proposed, use of these non-exempt funds shall require supplemental appropriation subject to approval of the delegation. This is a make work and create delay uh, provision that uh, we've already had enough uh, make work and delay that's cost us a lot of money and stalled this project in its tracks and I think that's not only uh, useless but uh, counterproductive and so I will not support the amendment but I would support the original original resolution. Thank you Representative Stapleton. Representative Aaron please. Yes thank you Mr. Chair. I would suggest and I would hope that we could um, uh, have a withdrawal of any amendments or resolutions to the original motion. I would like to uh, see that happen and have us vote on the original motion once again. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Representative Aaron. I don't know that would be up to Representative Merchant, but no. Uh, okay, no. Okay. So, any other questions or comments? Yes, Representative Tanner, please. Thank you. Um, I see this motion as encumbering funds, and I, and I believe this am oh. disturbed, really, that it's um, become, quote, a slap in the face to the commissioners. That's not the intent, my intent at all. And um, I find that um, unacceptable uh, to, to question motivation. So um, I feel as though this is just encumbering funds, and I think it's done quite often. and. Um, why it's all already a trust issue, I'm, I just, I don't see it. Thank you, Representative Tanner. Uh, any other questions or comments from the delegation before we vote on this amendment? Okay, are we re understand the parliamentary, and I believe we're going to vote on the amendment, Representative Merchant's amendment first. Uh, do we want a roll call vote on this amendment? Yes. I assume yes. we do. Okay, so is everybody ready? Okay, will the clerk, Representative O'Hearn, please call the roll? Representative Aaron? No. Representative Callum? No. Representative Collin? Yes. Representative Merchant? Yes. Clerk's votes? No. Representative Oxingham? Yes. Representative Rollins? No. Representative Smith? No. Representative Spilsbury? Yes. Representative Stapleton? No. Representative Tanner? Yes. Vice Chair? Yes. Chair? Yes. Seven to six? Seven okay. to six. All right. The, the amendment passes. Thank you very much, everybody. Now we are back to the main motion as amended. Any other further questions or comments about this motion, please? Shame on you all. Oh. Excuse me, I feel that's very inappropriate, inappropriate. Mr. Chetapur. Right. Yes. Okay, well, I, I understand we feel strongly about this, but if we could just try to confide our comments, I know uh, it, it's very upsetting, but we made the votes for various reasons, and I think based on our consciences. So I think it wasn't intended personally against any, I think it's just a disagreement between the two branches of government, the legislative, which the delegation is, and the executive branch. And I don't, you know, that's, yes. Would, he, would you redo the count, please? Okay. I, I thought I had eight. eight. Let's check, the, check the count. The clerk will call. There's seven. seven. Pardon me? There's seven yeses. One, two, three, four. Five, Could you six. review who those were, please? The yeses? Uh -huh. uh, Gottling, Merchant, Oxingham, Spillsbury, Tanner, Sullivan, and Cloutier. And the last was? Cloutier, Mr. Chair. So, 
Andy didn't vote. Andy didn't vote. Oh, you didn't vote. No, you Excuse voted. me. You voted, but you voted no. Oh, you voted no. Thanks. I think everybody voted. We were all here. So is everybody clear on the part, the vote? Yes. yes. Any other further questions about the vote before we go on? The on. amendment is approved. Now we go to the main motion. Okay. And I'm sorry if it got heated, but it's just an, an agreement between the exec executive and the legislative. Okay, now we go to the motion as amended, please. Make a motion as amended. Okay. Representative Merchant. Okay, do I have a second on that motion? Second. Second by Representative Sullivan. Okay. All right, any other further questions or comments about this motion as amended? Did anybody want this amended motion read before we take a vote? I assume we want a roll call vote, right? Okay, if everybody's ready, will the clerk representative? Motion read. All right, okay, yes, Representative Stapleton. Um, okay, so can we have the amended motion? Uh, I believe that's in front of you, right? I mean, pursuant to the New Hampshire RSA 24 colon 14, the delegation authorizes the Sullivan County Board of Commissioners to apply for, receive, and expend federal and or state grants and or unanticipated funds that become available during the course of fiscal year 23 and also to accept and expend funds from any other governmental unit or private source to be used for purposes for which Sullivan County may legally appropriate money and the expenditures of such funds shall be exempt from restrictions on over expenditures of appropriations under RSAs 24 colon 14 and 24 colon 15 provided that this exemption shall not apply to unspent American Rescue or ARPA funds received directly or indirectly in either fiscal 21 or 22 or that may be received in fiscal year 23 and that it does not apply to any coronavirus state and local fiscal relief funds, uh, SLFRF, received directly or indirectly in fiscal year 23 to the $2 million federal funds earmarked for the nursing home. Use of these non-exempt funds shall require supplemental appropriation subject to approval of the delegation. Is, okay, that's the amended motion. Are there any questions or comments about this before we go to a vote on this uh, item as now amended? And the motion again, I think Representative Merch Merchant, is that correct? And Representative Gottling, second. Sullivan. I'm sorry, Sullivan. Sullivan, I stand corrected. Are we ready for the vote? Okay, Representative O'Hearn, could you please call the roll? Representative Karen. No. Representative Cowan. No. Representative Gottling. Yes. Representative Merchant. Yes. Clerk Focus no. Representative Oxenham. Yes. Representative Rollins. No. Representative Smith. No. Representative Spilsbury. Yes. Representative Stapleton. No. no. Representative Tanner. Yes. The ch Vice Chair. Uh, yes. The Chair. Yes. <coughs> okay. The, uh, Seven to six. And how, what is the vote, please? Seven to six. Seven to six. Okay, and the motion passes on a seven to six roll call vote. Thank you. All right, let's move on. Uh, now we will have the public hearing to authorize the bond for the Sullivan County Health Care Renovation Project. So I think we're going to have the public hearing, and I don't know if any members of the public wish to speak. Uh, you know, and I don't know. I, and that includes if the commissioners, I think, want to speak. Yes, Commissioner Nelson, please. Just a comment. Somebody made a comment that this is a disagreement between two branches of government. Please leave us out of this. This is what we agreed to. We told you we agreed to it. Okay. We haven't deviated from it. The disagreement and ill will was between members of the delegation, so please leave the commissioners out of it. Okay. I mean, it, it, boy, it, that, that wasn't the right statement. That's between two branches of government. But, Okay. The vitriol all right. I heard was between you folks, not between right. you okay. and us. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Nelson. Um, okay. Further question. I mean, public hearing has begun. Is there anybody who wishes to speak either for or against uh, this mo uh, motion? I'm sorry. Go ahead. <clears throat> there is no motion. Um, basically, <clears throat> what, what I'd like to do on behalf of the, uh, the work group is uh, lay out uh, exactly what 
um, the work group is recommending and how we came to that conclusion. And I guess as a preface, I'm going to say to all of us, let's keep our eyes on the prize. We've got a nursing home that really needs renovation, and um, we're closing in on this thing. Um, so um, I just ask you all to uh, uh, keep your eyes on the prize. So, um, <clears throat> Derek, are you able to put this on the screen? Um, I could have to find the file. I thought you were just going to it out, so I wasn't. Okay, I, I, that's fine. There's uh, a document labeled uh, number five in our packet. Um, that's the one I'm looking at. That's what I'll be going through. Um, <clears throat> first thing that the um, work group did is we tried to uh, come up with a... Um, a current estimated um, uh, projected cost for the project. As we'll all recall, I hope, um, in January of 2022, we um, had a uh, consultant um, work with us, and, uh, and, and Mary also sort of checked the numbers. And uh, at that point in, J in January, the conclusion was that we had an approximate $57 million project. It has not gone out to bid yet. So we do not have a rock-solid number, but the best estimate at that moment was $57 million. Um, <clears throat> basically, Mary has uh, been speaking to Warren Street, and um, um, you know, time has passed, um, and um, inflation is unfortunately ramping up. And uh, the question of Warren Street was, what kind of um, uh, uh, inflation uh, escalators might we want to look at and uh, the what we were told was that we should look at a five to ten percent inflation escalator um, and um, this um, inflation factor um, of six million dollars is uh, on the high side of that um, but I we felt as a work group that that was an appropriate uh, uh, inflation factor to uh, include. And so our best estimate at the moment um, for the total cost of the project is $63 million. Um, again, has to go out to bid um, before we will know for sure, but uh, that's our best number at the moment. Okay, thank you, Rep. Wait, I'm not so, done. Not I'm done. sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, didn't mean to interrupt you. S second is the funding sources as of June 2022. <clears throat> We have several uh, sources of funding. Some of them are relatively new to the, the scene. Um, we have a federal budget uh, uh, through Gene, Senator, Senator Gene Shaheen of $2 million. We have um, $7 million remaining in county ARPA funds. Um, we additionally have $5 million in capital reserves. Um, and the work group discussed this. and. Um, uh, concluded that uh, we shouldn't take it all, that some money ought to be left for other capital reserve needs. And so out of the $5 million, we um, are considering $3 million for funding the nursing home. And then there's the, um, the ARPA funds um, through Gopher. Um, apparently, Representative Merchant came up with a better term for that. But uh, these are the funds we've been talking about that we, we are getting through the Gopher Committee. and. Um, <clears throat> what we have come to understand is that the, um, this money would be limited to 40% of the total cost of the project. So 40% of the $63 million is um, $25 million, I think 25.2. Um, but, uh, but basically we've got a $25 million um, commitment from the, uh, from the Gopher Committee. So the total funding sources at this point is $37 million um, that we have in hand, well not in hand, but basically we're either in hand or anticipated. Um, <clears throat> so simple math, you take 63 million, subtract 37 million, we came up with 26 million. Um, so that is the work group recommendation. I will say we had a bit of a Goldilocks moment um, that uh, some members of the work group felt that we um, ought to go a little lower than this. Um, other other member, um, other parts of the committee um, thought that uh, we ought to go a little higher. Um, but um, the uh, number that passed uh, 
the, the committee was um, $26 million, which is, as best we know right now, the precise, I shouldn't use a word like precise, uh, the, the best estimate that we've got as to the money that we would need for, um, for a bond. Um, so that, that is the recommendation that uh, the work group has made. So um, with that, I will turn it back to the chair. Okay, thank you, Representative Sullivan. Questions of Representative Sullivan, please. Representative Merchant, please. It's not a question. It's more of a comment, if I may. I want to thank and recognize the work that Representative Sullivan and also the people in the work group have put into this. It's been a long journey. I think it's been a cooperative journey. I think it's been a collaborative journey. Um, and we're getting closer to the end. I think it's important that we recognize the work of those individuals, particularly Chairman Sullivan, in leading this group to get us where we are today. So thank you. Okay, thank you, Representative Merchant. Uh, further questions or comments uh, of Representative Sullivan? Yes, Representative Stapleton, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Is, is a, that um, $6 million inflation factor just a pure percentage figure, or does it include anything we might have backed out, like furniture, appliances, or other administrative costs, uh, like insurance or interest or whatever? I guess that's two, 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 two questions. Well, um, um, the $57 million is the total cost of the project as estimated, including everything. Nothing's been backed out. Um, the, um, this uh, six million dollar inf inflation factor is uh, obviously an approximate um, number. Uh, uh, Ten percent of fifty-seven million dollars would actually be five million seven hundred thousand. Um, but again, we're dealing with a lot of unknowns, so uh, the uh, the number we we picked as an inflation factor is uh, the six million. Um, so that again, this number will get pinned down by the bidding process, um, and but. What we, what we need before we do the bidding process is a commitment from this delegation to, um, um, to do the project, which will require the equipment to do a bond. And we got to figure out what number that bond ought to have. So right now we're recommending $26 million. Thank you. Yes, please continue, Representative I think that uh, the 9.5238 percent or whatever it comes out to is entirely defensible given the circumstances we have with fuel, material, and labor costs uh, going through the roof uh, in the country. So um, hopefully it's, it's even enough, uh, but I think it's uh, fully defensible and should not be a problem. I would anticipate not to be a problem uh, in defending that. And thank you for the work that you've done, Representative, uh, on this project and leading it on the work. Yes, Representative Roberts. I also want to thank you, Colonel Sullivan, on doing a wonderful job navigating this. He had a very hard job, for, you know, dealing with everything. He is spot on. He listens to everyone. And he's done an excellent, excellent job on that special committee. And I just want everybody to know that as well. Okay. Representative, uh, okay, uh, Aaron, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I also would like to echo those sentiments. I think uh, Representative Sullivan has done a superb job commanding and leading this, uh, this effort, and uh, I appreciate all the work he's put into it, as well as the members of the uh, work group. Thank okay, thank you. Uh, yes, Representative, I'm sorry, Representative Oxenham, please. Yes, I, I'd like to thank all the members of the working group. I think we've come a long way from where we were with, at, when the working group was first set up with a wing and a prayer. And I'd like to specifically uh, thank Representative Aaron for her work with Gopher, which was uh, very, very useful, and for bringing that bill before the um, House. It wasn't successful, but it made a big difference, and I think it paved the way for maybe in the future similar legislation. So thank you for your efforts. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Yes, Representative Spillsbury, please. Um, I'm wondering, uh, Representative Sullivan, could you catch us up on exactly where the state process is? Um, has it, in fact, yeah, has it reached the point of being a commitment as such, or is it? Uh, um, it has. Um, it has been approved by the um, the Joint Fiscal Committee. The, uh, 
I, I should say what's been approved. A, a $50 million nursing home fund has been approved by the uh, uh, Joint Fiscal Committee. The $50 million um, nursing home fund has been approved by the Executive Council. Um, we Do we have an, an application packet yet? Yeah. We are waiting on Gopher, um, who has been read <laughs> From what I understand, um, desperately trying to spend money, um, and, and not necessarily this money. Um, so essentially, we've not yet put in our application, but all indications have been that um, well, this fund, this fifty million dollar fund would not exist if it weren't for the Sullivan County Nursing Home Project. Um, I, I believe that what what they did was smart, that they put it. Rather than simply giving um, 25 million to uh, Sullivan County and telling everybody else, it sucks to be you, um, they uh, instead created the fund, knowing that we had a shovel-ready project that was ready to uh, um, use the funds. And other nursing homes might have smaller projects that could expend um, the rest of that 20, uh, 50 million. So I, I, it was a smart move. Um, it, uh, avoided animosity between counties, um, but um, basically um, we've got the application process to go through, but um, we know the formula is 40%, so we know the number is probably 25 million. I say probably because um, that's based on a $63 million total cost. If the cost comes in at um, 57 million, there's no inflation whatsoever, then we'll probably have to give some of the money back. Um, but we'll be happy to be spending less. Um, but I think, um, Derek, is that, is that an accurate uh, portrayal of where we're at? Yes. Okay, good. I, I try. There was a little bit of whining from other counties, but it was. <laughs> and, and, and the governor has made pretty certain that his thumb is on the scale. You know, he's as close as he can promise that it's $25 million. To us. So if I'm on the scale, means he's supporting this program. Y yes, and, and the $25 million. So his, his thumb is on the scale. And Gopher does stand for governor's whatever. <laughs> yeah, I, I forget the acronym. Yeah, so but the I have first word is governor. That I can remember. Okay, yeah. Okay, Representative Tanner, please. I, I too, would like to thank the working group and, and everybody that's on it for doing a great job to this point. Um, my question is, it sounds to me like these are all, like, several parts of this um, funding stream and also the projected costs are all moving targets, is that? And that some of them, like, what we would expend in a bond or, or encumber in a bond <clears throat> depends a lot on the total cost of the project, which then also depends on how much money we get from Gopher. It just seems like there's a lot of moving parts to this? Am I seeing it right? I wouldn't say a lot of moving parts. Um, we've got um, the $2 million from the Feds, $7 million from ARPA, $3 million from Capital Reserves. That's money we've got. Okay, that's, okay. The $25 million is, um, needs to go through an application process, but we've gotten <laughs> all kinds of good vibes uh, from Gopher and the Governor about uh, that money coming through. Um, the $63 million um, total project cost, we've got that number because a year ago when we were sitting here, we agreed that it would be a good idea to hire a consultant to come up with some kind of uh, number because we all re recalled, or at least most of us did, the earlier experience when we were expecting a low number and got a much higher number. And we wanted to avoid that experience again, so essentially we... Um, had the consultant come in. So do we know what this project costs? No. Do we have a pretty good idea? I think so. I think we've got a pretty good idea. And I think the um, the inflation factor is uh, is a responsible thing to add in. So. I just, can I? Yes, I'm sorry. Go ahead, please. It, it seemed to me like, um, and I know the gopher funds, I, I feel as though they're committed to us. So that's no problem. But it seems like the 40% of that project cost, when you said we may end up giving money back, um, it just seems like there's a couple of, all those things kind of affect what we actually bond for this program. Is that 
Is that what I'm seeing? Yeah, basically, if we, if we could have a rock solid um, cost estimate or cost determination for this project, we'd all feel a lot better. <laughs> we would. I mean, it, it's much better knowing exactly what it'll cost. Um, it's not as good, but it's pretty good to have a good idea of what it's going to cost. Right. So I think we've got a good idea. And, and, I, and another th discussion piece we had earlier in the process was uh, taking multiple bonds. You know, take, a, um, take two bonds um, and, um, you know, that way you can sort of cover the unexpected. Um, the very unattractive part about doing that now, and we may need to take another bond for a small amount late down the road, but if we do, do like half of it now and half of it later, we're probably going to pay a lot higher interest on the other half, the second half. And I don't think that's uh, responsible uh, activity. Um, if, we, if we're off in some of our estimates and we have to go back for some small amount, that's what we'll have to do. But, uh, okay. All right. Yes, I'm sorry, Representative Aaron, please. A point of clarification. Are we still within the public hearing? Yeah. Um, yeah, okay, because obviously I think the public hearing, um, because a sort of no one came to, you know, from the public, unfortunately, which is too bad either for or against. So I think probably I should have been clarified that the public hearing part is over. Let's find out if there's any further questions. Any further questions, yeah. From, okay, the delegation, please. Um, yes, Representative Solomon, very much Follow-up question, though, is do we have any smoke signals from the state about the timing of their decision? Derek, do you have any? I mean, it, it seems like they've been not moving lightning fast and getting this application to us, so any idea when it's coming? They originally said end of July, so they still have, I guess, a couple of days uh, <laughs> and before they're not correct. Um, I did speak to Deputy Director Hageman last week and he said that they were pedaling hard to get it out as soon as possible and then after we get it it'll take us some time to put that together I suspect it'll not be something that's done in 20 or 30 minutes but probably a couple of days and then it'll go back up we can probably expect a six to eight week process to get it reapproved the actual grant funding to us would be also need to be approved by governor and council if there are any questions about our application, that could slow it down if there's any back and forth, so. And I guess the, uh, the conclusion to that time frame is we can't afford to wait. Um, we really, we, it would be nice if that money was in hand, again, because that would be one more, you know, thing we've got nailed down. But um, I think at this point we have to uh, go with the belief that uh, the money will be forthcoming, and if it's, uh, I mean, what <laughs> what we need to do is we need to um, get this, this thing out to bid. We can't get this thing out to bid until we've gotten a commitment from this delegation that we're going to do this thing, and that commitment comes in the form of dollars. If we if we can send the message that we have uh, committed to a sixty three million dollar um, sum. We believe strongly that that will um, encourage um, subcontractors to um, be confident that this project is, is, is a going thing. Um, so um, we just if we wait until everything's done, it'll be, we'll be, be another two years down the road, which we can't really do. Okay, yes, Commissioner Nelson, please. The bond is approved and for something reason, the $25 million disappears. We're not committed to build it even, you know, we either build something for $25 million less or pay the bond off. You know, it's not like the $25 million doesn't come. We're not going to go back to the taxpayers and look for another $25 million bucks. And, and the type of bond that we're looking at, there, there are two kinds of um, um, bonds you can purchase. One is the twice-a-year opportunity, which uh, is a sort of a group um, bonding. Um, and my understanding is that those cannot be prepaid. Um, so if you um, if we went with that kind of bond, um, once we commit to it and take the bond, we, we, we've got the bond. We got to pay pay it off over the course of 25, 29 years. But uh, if um, 
if we take the second type of bond, which is what we anticipate doing, because we're a little bit off schedule anyways, um, it allows us to do two things. If something happens that, um, where we've got money falls from the sky, and we realize that we didn't need 25 or 26 million dollars in bonds, we can pay a portion of it back early. Um, if 10 years from now, or five years from now, the interest rates that are creeping upwards now go back to where they used to be, we can refinance the bond. We can pay it off and, and, and refinance and uh, get a new bond at a lower interest rate, which would save the county uh, a great deal of money. So th this gives us some opportunity. It also makes the idea of taking the full $26 million now, the same kind of bond, I think, more attractive. So. Okay. All right, Rough Center Merchant, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to be clear, understand the process, and I want to follow up with Commissioner Nelson. Um, and for whatever reason, I don't foresee it happening. But if it does, you need to be prepared for it. But for whatever reason, the application and whatever process where the money can go for doesn't materialize. If I understand it correctly, when we sign on as a delegation or as a county and we engage the project manager to go out for bids, we're basically ensuring them that we are standing behind those bids. So if the bids come in at 45 or $50 million and the money doesn't come from the state, we're still on the, obligated to pay off that $25 million because we are basically putting our approval on those bids. Is that correct? I'm looking at... I don't believe so until there's a contract signed. But the contracts won't be signed. Exactly, until we get the money. So The contracts will not be signed until we have all the money in hand. Okay, so the contracts won't be signed until we have all the money in hand. Are we doing this prematurely? Because what I heard was, maybe I'm wrong about this, we haven't received the application for applying to the state. That still has to go through a process. That's going to take us until probably September or October. So if we're going to say we're not going to commit to the project and the contracts until we have the money in hand. Is that what I'm hearing? Well, I mean, we're not going to, we're not going to put a shovel on the ground until we have money in hand. Okay. You, you know, the, the, yeah. the idea of getting this bond approved is, A, that giant sucking sound you hear is interest rates going up as we listen. So that's why we need the bond approved and, and to get the, that money now. And it shows a huge commitment, you know, no, it's not signed in cement, but it's a huge commitment to the projects going forward, and contractors will sharpen their pencil. I mean, it's a lot of time and work to do a bid project on any of these subs. So it gives them a huge, um, not 100% confidence, but 95% confidence the project's going ahead. But it, it's, you know, a bid is not a guarantee that you're going to get the money. People put in bids, you know, company ABC put in a bid, and it's not done until a contract is signed. Um, yes, Thank you for that, Commissioner Nelson. What I also heard was that if we go out for another guaranteed maximum price because of the market conditions we have, that most of the people who are bidding on something will only hold the bids for, for maybe at best five or six weeks. The last time when we had a better conditions and markets were more favorable, they'd hold the bids for probably four to six months. But what I've heard before, that the bids most likely only be guaranteed for approximately four to six weeks. So if we go out for a guaranteed maximum price now, and it comes in in September, we don't have the assurance of the money until October or November, I'm just looking at the timeline to be sure that we're lining up everything correctly and not have an aha moment where all of a sudden something went through the cracks. That's all I'm asking for. Russian Sultan. I guess I would suggest that um, the commissioners work with the, uh, the builder um, to make sure that the, uh, the timing of the bidding, if we need to delay the bidding to guarantee that we've got the ARPA funds, then that's what we have to do. Mm -hmm. um, but um, uh, if, and, and they, they will know better um, exactly how long. Uh, subcontracts will hold the uh, the bids for it is a limited length of time so I, we wouldn't want to have the bids done ready to sign contracts and then say well it's going to be another three months 
um, that that would be a mistake. Um, so I, I will trust that uh, the commissioners and the builder they work with will um, keep that from happening. Your Representative Aaron, please. Uh, yeah, okay, you wanted to respond first. Yeah. I'm sorry, then I'll roll to your hands. Answer. The funding has to be secured first before the GOP is secured. That's the sequence of events. So we have to get the bond squared away. The, the gopher process has to be completed. Um, and then that's when we'll, we'll pursue the GMP. Uh, the opinion of bond council, which is a big part of the, if we do indeed go for the $26 million, uh, she has to state with confidence that we have all the elements of this funding stack lined up, which means, doesn't mean that we necessarily have to have the governor and council contract signed, but she has to have enough assurance that it's going to be signed. So we will be synchronizing. Those two timelines are going to be on a parallel track over the next six to eight weeks. So um, if she doesn't express confidence that we're going to get the 25 odd million from the state, she can't write her opinion that we have all the funding secured for this project to move forward, then the bond bank won't issue us the bond. So there's a few layers to the cake, but that we're working them in parallel, which I think in the interest of time is the right thing to do. But we do have to ha let those parallel lines do have to converge for us to have uh, demonstrated confidence not only to the bond bank, but also to our bidders that we do indeed have all the money that we said we needed. Okay, yeah, uh, perhaps I'm going to just be patient until the rest of the as I understand, we're having a hearing tonight, and now we have to have a vote within 14 days to approve the bond mm -hmm. um, or not. Um, but I'm hearing you say that the bond attorney may not give us the go-ahead to have that vote. No, she's not going to stop you from having a vote. It's just that it's after the vote, it's still the 60-day process to get the, uh, the bond package completed through the bond okay. bank. So, so we won't have the $26 million in the bank still takes a couple of months for that to happen. While that's happening, all these other process was, processes will also take place. And, and if that process is, is ongoing, she's got six, uh, 60 days, are we confident that we will have an answer from Gopher within 60 days of, or 75 days from now? Yeah, I, mean, I think that's a reasonable estimate based on all the information that we have at this time. Um, and her opinion will come at the very end, so it, it can let all those other factors play out and then she can kind of come on the top, even at the 11th hour, and issue an opinion that will accompany our package, and that's when we go to the market to actually And, and I, I guess I would also suggest that uh, having a, a, um, a, a hard deadline might motivate Gopher to get things done. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, Representative Aaron, thank you for your patience, followed by Representative Tanner. Sure, thank you. So I just, just don't want to have clarification whether or not we're still doing a public here if we're still okay doing a public here if you make clear I will close unless there's an objection anybody else from the public or any of the commissioners want us okay I'm going to close this public hearing on uh, the authorizing the bond for Sullivan County health care thank you very much representative Ann, for that clarification it's just a little the way things going I was expecting more people so okay so uh, yes, uh, Chairman ahead. Cloutier uh, then with all the discussion that we have already had um, I'd like to make a motion, propose a motion, and I'll pass this down to you, also to okay. you. Okay. Uh, Representative Tanner, I mean, I don't think you need to She's got the So I'd like to make a motion, you can pass this down, to approve the Sullivan County Nursing Home Renovation Project and authorize the Sullivan County Commissioners to bond up to $26 million for the Sullivan County Nursing Home Renovation Project in accordance with language, rules, and procedures required by our bond attorney and the bonding process in order to begin work on this project. I think with all the um, information that we discussed already today during this session in the public hearing and at our working group that we have all the information that we need as a delegation to make this uh, motion and to approve this project and move forward. We've been working on this for the past four years already. We already have uh, uh, good information about how much uh, money this is, project is going to cost, how much our funding stack, uh, where, where the different pieces of the funding stack will be. And I think it's about time that this body comes together, makes a decision, approves this project, and moves forward. Thank you, Representative Aaron. Do I have a second on that? Uh, second by Representative Rollins. 
So now we are debating. Yes, Rep. Some Tanner, I'm sorry. I, That's okay. If um, you wish to speak, I don't know. I would just like to, you said that the $26 million was kind of a Goldilocks figure. That, that was just right. Which meant that there were some people that were right. right, right. But you talked about how on the on the committee, on the work group, there were some people that thought it should be more and some people that sh sh thought it should be less. Um, and I would like to hear some of the issues around that. Um, you know, why 26 million instead of 25 or 24 or 28? Why, why was it just that as you might, well, I'm not going to answer my own question. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I'm not comfortable. I supported the 26 million. So I am not comfortable speaking for other people as to uh, uh, why they felt the way they felt. So, uh, and uh, Commissioner Hebert um, is, is not here tonight, and he was he's part of the, the group, and he was not, not um, supportive of the 26. So I don't know what you do about that. <coughs> Uh, okay, yes. Uh, Representative Rollins, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Followed by Representative Spillsbury. Um, there was a discussion between going 24 million, draining everything, including capital reserves, or leaving the leaving the capital reserves in place, leaving $5 million. Okay. I asked, offered a compromise to leave $200 million in the capital reserves. Okay. Two, two, two million, wait, sorry, thank you, Judy. Two million in the capital reserves so that we had money available if we needed it. And to me, that was a compromise between the leaving the five million in capital reserves and draining it. And it's a little bit less than half, but it was a compromise so that we could get this project started. And I think to be fiscally responsible, we need to leave at least two million dollars in the capital reserve so if something comes up, then the commissioners, the delegation, everybody, we have the money to take care of those issues. We cannot drain it down to, to zero. So it was a compromise to put it at 26 and leaving $2 million in the capital reserves. Thank you, Senator Robertson. So is this just the, this is just, oh, okay. just the nursing home capital reserve? This is not like no, a... It's, no, it's, the, it's, the, our capital reserve, it's our capital reserve for everything in the county, right? All the county capital reserve. So it's not just the, the nursing home. It is the county's capital reserve funds. Okay. Trying to leave something so if there's an emergency, we we can take care of it. Other questions? Yes, Manager Furlan. Uh, Chair Gruden, you just to respond to Representative Taylor. I, I don't mind speaking on behalf of Chair Hebert because I was in the meeting. I know he his position was $30 million, was the bond amount that he supported. Uh, that's why he voted no on the 26 because he firmly believed in the 30. Uh, two main reasons why, both related to uncertainty. Uh, the first is the uncertainty about the total project cost. And he said, well, what if this comes in at 65? Um, having a $30 million bond would still leave us flexibility to respond to that condition. Um, there was a lot of discussion with the group, and I think um, the group said, well, if we needed more money, we could always reconvene and appropriate more money. And so whatever position a person you know wants to view that, that's fine. But for Commissioner Hebert, he just thought 30 would provide that level of flexibility. And the second um, factor is our operating budget. He is very concerned about how FY23 is going to shake out and what that's going to mean next year as we start to build a budget for FY24. Uh, we rolled forward quite a bit of variance because our expenses were lower for a lot of our personnel because of the number of vacancies. We don't expect that to quite come through this year. And so next year we could have a serious budget concern and he thought keeping a little bit of ARPA money in reserve would allow us to address that possibility as well. So that was his the two main points that he was advocating for the thirty million. Yeah, Rep. Sam Sullivan, please. Um, this is I think for the county manager. Um, as we were leading up to um, this process, we had um, a draft bond, a bond vote uh, motion. That I believe was prepared by the um, uh, the attorney, mm -hmm. and it was a, a bit longer than the, the motion we're looking at now. And I'm concerned as to whether or not that's a problem that we're looking at a motion that does not necessarily conform with what the um, the bond attorney might feel we need. Uh, it's a very good point. She was uh, recommending changes as late as uh, yesterday. Um, and it was my understanding there wasn't going to be a vote tonight, so I basically told her I don't know that we have to 
um, you know, we're under a serious time crunch uh, to get this buttoned up in preparation for tonight. So, and, and, I, and I don't disagree, Representative Aaron, with your sentiment that um, uh, we've, we're probably pretty close to being able to do this. But I am concerned about this because um, I, I know that we were just were swapping these documents um, some some many months ago. Um, and uh, I, I, I want to make sure that when we do this, we do it right, and that um, we don't end up with a, um, a motion that we pass that's not uh, um, workable, and we'll have to have another vote anyway. So, um, um, and, and I guess I would further suggest, and there's, I'm not on the EFC, so I don't have a dog in that fight, but, um, uh, but I, I know that there is an intent at one point to have the, the work group take a look at this, make a recommendation, and then have the EFC um, uh, take a look at this and um, either confirm that recommendation or come up with their own. Um, but, um, and, and as this developed, and there are reasons why the EFC couldn't meet um, before now, but there might be some advantage to having gone through this process, because the EFC in its entirety, I mean, we've got two members that are on the work group, but the EFC in its entirety, um, now has um, heard the discussion, um, heard the explanation and the, the, the rationale behind this, and um, I would raise that as a second question as to whether the EFC, um, if, if we would benefit from having the EFC vote review, uh, meet, review this, and um, hopefully confirm the uh, um, intent of the, um, the work group, but um, they would be in a position to uh, make, make a different recommendation. Different recommendation. So, um, to, um, oh, yeah, rep uh, uh, rep okay. <coughs> Representative Aaron, please. Followed by Representative Gottwein. Yes, so Representative Sullivan, with regard to your uh, concern about the language, this is why I structured this to say that uh, this is in, in accordance with language rules and procedures required by our bond attorney and the bonding process in order to begin work on the project. So it's sort of, um, I think, all inclusive of what that language would have been. Um, and I think the intent is to include any specifics that are um, not included here. And as so far and so far as um, the EFC meeting, um, we members of the EFC are here. They've heard all the information that the working group has put together. Um, we had the EFC had a month between the last delegation meeting and this meeting to have gotten together and discussed this and did not. Um, and I feel that since members of the EFC are already here and have heard all the information that uh, was provided during this meeting and the public hearing, that they have enough information to be able to vote on this. Um, we've had plenty of discussion on this. We have beat this project to death. And I think it's about time we make a decision as a body. And that's why I'm make, I made this motion. Okay, thank you, Representative Aaron. Representative Gottlieb, please. No, did I didn't want to speak. I'm sorry. I thought you Representative raised. Spilsbury wanted yeah. to speak. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Repres yeah. I apologize, Representative Spilsbury. You want to speak. I appreciate your patience. I was thinking, thank you, Representative Spilsbury. Okay, thank you. Yes, thank you. Go ahead, please. Um, so, Representative Sullivan, Sullivan anticipated both of my two comments, but I'd like to amplify them anyway. Um, an EFC meeting has been noticed properly for Friday. As a member of the EFC, I'm looking forward to that discussion and I'll be there. Um, and uh, since the EFC, for whatever reasons, hasn't had the opportunity to review it, as uh, Representative Sullivan has suggested, um, I think it would be premature to vote tonight. The, um, the second comment is that I think that the motion as presented to us, although well intended, is wholly inadequate. I, I could not vote for and support a, uh, a motion for a bond approval, especially of this size, that simply says in accordance with language, rules, and procedures required by a bond attorney, 
in the bonding process. That's precisely what we need to know and have in front of us when we take the vote. Thank you, Representative Bill Further questions or oh, Representative Sullivan, please. I, I just want to go back to that same point. To vote on a motion that you can't see, I think, is irresponsible. And um, we can see your, your motion, of course. But to say that we're voting on something like this, and this was a draft. This was going to be modified further. So I, I think we, we need to carefully craft a motion. We need to get that motion, read that motion, and know what we're approving. It, to, to vote on something that the, we'll just let the attorneys take care of it. Uh, is, I'm, I'm uncomfortable with that. Yes, Representative Stapleton, please. Representative Sullivan, did I hear you say that that draft that you had in hand was not complete yet? Are there more revisions to come to it? What I heard the county have to say is that the county, um, or the, the bond attorney, is presently working on a motion that matches uh, circumstances as they exist today. Is that fair? Yeah, it's probably 95% complete. It's just a few word changes that she wanted to make sure were dialed in. And uh, once I learned on Friday that there was not likely to be a vote tonight, we spoke again on Monday, and she said, well, should I have it prepared? And I said, well, there, I don't think there's going to be a vote. So we're kind of expecting, you know, sometime in August for a vote. So um, she's working on it, but she's very busy. So she um, it didn't have it uh, all the way ready. Thank you. Uh, Representative Stapleton, please. As a follow-up, I would like to be enlightened as to what the draft contains at the 95% level at this point, at least to be put in uh, mind of uh, thought and, and understanding of what uh, what the direction and the concerns were. If well, I don't a, know whether not we, a vote. we have that. I, I, sorry. Th 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 this document is from six nine months ago uh, it's a long long time ago so that this I, I only held this up for contrast purposes and it's got blanks on it as well um, it hasn't really been you know put together and, and what would need to go in this are all the numbers that we've been discussing tonight so that basically it, it would in, indicate as I understand it where the funding's coming from what the cost is and to support the, the size of the bond is that fair yeah, the, the version you have is the 83% draft, so the 95% draft, there are no blanks. Uh, she just wanted to look through and she wanted to also consult with DRA, who also has to review these documents and make sure that the verbiage uh, complied with, uh, with what DRA likes to see. Like, the, for instance, they never like to see the word up to, so she was having to finagle, knowing that there's a lot of variability because there are a few moving pieces and parts in this funding stack, and give us the flexibility to... Secure the, secure the total amount of funding without tying our hands. So that was really the last piece of craftsmanship uh, that she was working on. So, okay, Commissioner Nelson, you were going to well, add something? Just from other bond school municipal stuff, the legal verbiage is important. We spent a lot of time uh, talking about what the uh, that particular uh, uh, the document would look like and uh, so I, I mean I just I, I feel I, I guess I would like to ask uh, uh, County Manager Furland uh, on Friday will there be a completed one or will there be an almost completed one for sure almost and, and all we're yeah. and all we would be doing would be making a recommendation on an amount for bonding, we're not going to be voting on, you know. So, I, uh, I have an appointment to speak with her tomorrow morning, yeah. and I could just simply say, "Hey, we need it for Friday." I think I think that's doable, but I'll confirm that tomorrow morning. Perhaps I'm solving, please. Um, <clears throat> two pieces to this. Number one, based on the discussion we've had, I would respectfully ask whether or not uh, Representative Aaron would consider withdrawing her motion. No. Um, that said, the second part would be, I would like to make, make a motion to table. Second. Okay, so now there is a motion to table. It's a non-debatable motion. As I understand, a motion to table requires a simple majority vote, whereas the bond is going to require a uh, two-thirds vote. 
So is everybody understand what the motion is and whenever the clerk is ready, if the clerk, Representative O'Hearn, will please call the roll. Okay, Rep. Who Representative Sullivan? You t okay? I seconded it. Oh, I seconded it. Okay, so Representative Sullivan moved. Representative Tanner seconded the motion to table. Yes. Eight yeses, five noes. Okay, the motion to table is uh, passed. Um, okay, so, um, so the EFC will be meeting on Friday. Um, the other thing, item six on the agenda, re review and approve the draft meeting minutes of the work group of July 12th. So I don't know if, if uh, Representative Sullivan, you want to do this now. Uh, yeah, I, I reviewed these. Okay, yes, you reviewed those. Okay, yep. so I guess you need a motion from someone on the work yep. group, please. Do I have a motion to uh, approve the, the minutes for the uh, work group meeting of July 12th, uh, 22nd? 22. Motion. I'll make the motion to accept it. Motion by Representative Second. Second. Yeah. Those Aaron Rollins, are you willing to second? Yeah, I'll second. Um, Representative Rollins, are about to vote? All in favor of approving minutes, uh, say yes. 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 Uh, I, all, all opposed? Minutes passed. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, any other old business? Um, as I said, the Executive Finance Committee is meeting on Friday the 29th at 10 a.m. Um, so, I mean, okay. I, mean, I believe it would be prudent for us, since the delegation is all here, for us to find um, the best date in the next 14 days to reconvene, so we we do need to vote within 14 days, correct? Mm -hmm. So let's let's find a date after Friday, but uh, before the 14 days are up, to uh, re reconvene and uh, vote on a motion that is provided by the uh, bond attorney. And I would, before you, we try to get a date, I'm willing to have it during the day because I think we've had the public hearing, we've had the ch public a chance to vote on it, and I don't think it's, depending on what the EFC says, it's going to take that long. Uh, and I want to finalize it, so just in, in, in getting times. And we have until the 9th. Uh, I'm aware, Representative Aaron, yeah, you have a, you, you're going out of the, you're going to California, was it th the 3rd? Uh, and because of the sit in the finance committee meetings is Friday, so frankly, I would like to meet again early next week to take a final vote on this after the ESEA has a chance to look it over and make its recommendation, and we'll, then we'll have their recommendation, the work group's recommendation, and then we'll hopefully take a vote. And it takes going to take a two-thirds vote to pass. So we're, if all 13 of us are here, it's going to take nine votes. I know this, uh, so I don't know, is there any dates that are, any times that are out? I'm try I'll be as flexible as possible, like Monday. I could meet any time Monday the 2nd. Tuesday's the 1st. Tuesday's the 1st. Okay, but, but you've got to leave, you're leaving the 3rd, is that correct? So basically either the 1st fir the first or the 2nd, which is a Monday and Tuesday, are best for you. And I'm, I'm willing to meet any time practically. Tuesday is better for me. Tuesday? All right. Monday's better than Tuesday, but I could probably make Tuesday work. Um, it's a family vacation, but if we can do it via Zoom, I can try to participate via Zoom. Okay, by Zoom, yeah. If you have a quorum, you can participate, Representative Merchant. Okay. 
What about, is there any, if, if I, I said, pick, pick, pick all right, I'm going to pick a date. Pick a time, too. Um, I'm going to pick a time, and I'm going to make it during the daytime. Can we meet Tuesday, August 2nd at 1 p.m.? Is that possible? And then we'll, the EFC meeting, we'll meet. It Hopefully we'll make a recommendation, and then we can study, and then we're going to meet again. And I don't expect, other than the minutes of this meeting, we're not going to have anything, I mean, if they're ready, uh, take a vote, you know, maybe have a debate, brief debate of an hour or so, and hopefully get, take a vote one way or the other, and, set, and, and hopefully settle it one way or the other. Are we all in agreement for yes. Tuesday, August 2nd at 1 p.m., and we want to meet in the commissioner or the upstairs courthouse? Is fine. Is there any objections? Anybody cannot make it. I will try to accommodate you. I can't. You, you can't? Uh, what what's a good time that day, Representative Smith? The earlier or later, because um, I have meetings probably from eleven to three, so I could do it at nine. Anybody object to nine? Is that too early? And as I said, it should only take about I would think about an hour because I think the t Thank after you very much time. Okay, so we'll meet at nine uh, at the commission or or upstairs in the courthouse. <laughs> And I appreciate everybody's forbearance. I know this has been a long, over a year. I'd like to take a vote, but I think we need to one more time do our deal. And the executive finance, since this is going to impact the budget, should do its due diligence as well. Uh, yeah, what's that? For, for doing it in the morning, if I could, so I don't end with the family. Um, last year, I was able to do it from the coast of Maine. Um, the family was very forgiving. I would like to avoid that if I could. Is it possible to do it Monday at 9 o'clock instead of Tuesday? Is anybody object to Monday, August 1st at 9 o'clock? Nope. Okay. Is it okay with you? Yep. Okay, so it sounds like everybody can make Monday, August 1st at 9 a.m. Thank you. Mr. And I expect hopefully an hour, hour and a half, I, you know, hopefully it won't be that long. And hopefully we'll take a vote one way or the other and... Let's, uh, let's just make it one way. One way, yeah, one way. Well, I'm just, I, I try, I'm trying to be objective. As a ch I'm supposed to be, not show any bias. Of course, I do have my biases. So, um, um, okay, so is there anybody else? And, okay, so, and I plan to be at the EFC meeting on Friday at 10 a.m. Um, Me too. Okay, good. Thank you. As, okay. <laughs> yeah, well, well, the chair, vice chair, and clerk are ex officio members anyway, as I, I keep, you know, as I will remind you, Representative Dalton. Um, okay, but sir, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yes, Manager Furlan. Mr. Chair, yeah, before, uh, let me uh, interrupt your meeting again. There is a, a related matter that I want to at least bring to the delegation's attention. There will need to be a supplemental appropriation for our FY23 budget related to the bond. Uh, two main expenses, one of them will be the administrative fees associated with the uh, New Hampshire Municipal Bond Bank. Uh, to apply for the bond, it's going to be roughly $125,000. Uh, also, there will be the first payment, if it's approved, it'll be an interest-only payment that will happen in, in FY23. Um, so we don't have any funding in our current budget for those two items. So if, uh, if possible, it'd be nice to get that supplemental appropriation approved at the same time that the bond vote is taken, assuming the bond vote is successful. However, comma, uh, RSA 2414-A specifies the process for getting a supplemental appropriation processed, and it says there has to be a public hearing. doesn't specify how much notice is required. <laughs> Our bond council has advised that a best practice is to do the seven-day notice similar to the bonding public hearing but it doesn't explicitly say that in, our, in RSA 2414. So there will be two, one of two outcomes. Either when I speak to her tomorrow, I'll press her on the legality of having a public hearing uh, with less than seven days' notice to allow the delegation to go ahead on, on the first, on the first yeah. to get that done, and we'll, in the meantime, work on the estimates of what the fees will be that I mentioned earlier. If that is not suitable or not legally advisable, then we'll just have to have another meeting later in August which I think is okay. probably going to be doable. Okay, but let me be clear. 
if, if let's say we have this meeting and approve the bond bill, so we may have to come back for another meeting, but the, with the legality, if, if let's say the two-thirds of us of the delegation approves it, it still will be legal. It's not going to run into any problems. Yeah, the bond is completely separate. This is just for the matter of a supplemental appropriation. So if we want to try to kill two birds, Okay. Both things done in one meeting to avoid having to schedule another meeting. Okay, um, and we so we'd have to have a supplemental appropriation, and assuming everything go, you know, it's approved. We're also going to have to meet again 30 days after that date, like we do the budget, like we did. We had to approve the minutes. Is that correct? Yes. I I I, I get. Yeah, but that can be in the. Okay. Yeah. yeah okay. I'm just. But, but did, did I understand you say that we have to have a, a public hearing prior to the? Um, <coughs> the supplemental um, appropriation. In tw yeah, in 2414A. Yeah, I don't care what number it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the, um, it seems to me we would have to have the hearing now in order to have a supplemental appropriation a week from now. Well, it doesn't say how much notice that the you have to have for the public hearing, and then you can have a vote any time after the public hearing. Just oh, you can do it at... at, at at that time. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So just keep me in the you know a rough draft you know because I want to look it over and probably I, I bit the meeting Friday. Yeah. Uh, you I can you can update me and I just you know want a, a draft and everything. So fine if we have to do a, a public hearing we will do a it'll be at night but you know fine if the public wants to come I don't think. The worst case is we have to have another meeting later in August. It's just okay. going right. to See, it's gonna just, come down yeah. to your risk tolerance. Because okay. bond counsel, I know how lawyers think. She will say, you really shouldn't do this without seven days' notice. And I would say, well, it doesn't say that in the RSA, so I think Roughly, three days' okay. notice would be that sufficient. That makes sense, <laughs> yeah. Six um, days' notice. <laughs> that's why I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> yes, I'm Representative Tanner, please. Bruce uh, Mills. Uh, do you have that information for us for the EFC on Friday, the, what, the, uh, what that would be, and also the the effect on the budget for next year as far as where we're going to get this money and absolutely okay great am i correct if i may mr chairman okay. that yes, sir. that will will uh, the the 600,000 dollars that we did not use in the last year that should be available that's correct it right is and but we will need more because there will be the bond council fee correct yeah, well, I'll outline what all the different expenses will be and where we could and identify some potential fund sources as well. Okay. All right, anything else from the delegation or anybody else? Uh, I think, oh, I, first of all, I want to thank Sugar River Valley Technical Center and NCTVA for the use of their room tonight, and especially Mr. John Wan. And that way, you know, we're keeping the public informed. Uh, so with that, uh, unless anybody has any thanks, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. A mo Representative Se O'Hearn. Okay. <laughs> Representative Merchant uh, seconds that motion. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, all those opposed, motion carries. Meeting adjourned. Thank you very much, everybody. No, you